Hey everybody, this is uh, Mr. Pulgarin, and I want to welcome you to uh, this video podcast on the Industrial Revolution. As you guys know, we've been learning about the Industrial Revolution from 1700 uh, to 1900, and we learned about the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution and its impact on other countries and the world. Well, if you look at what we've been learning, uh, we be learned about the beginnings of industrialization. We're going to go into that. We looked at a case study, what industrialization looked like in one city, and the city was Manchester, England. And then we talked about how industrialization spread to other countries, and eventually, because of the problems brought on about by uh, industrialization, we learned um, how people try to change that. Now, let's look at a quick map. Let's get a little reference point. Where are we talking about? What are we talking about? If you look here... Oh my God, it's frozen. Okay, if you look here, this is over here, the United Kingdom. And this part right here is England. Here's London. Here's Manchester, the little city we've been talking about. And here's the rest of Europe. Now, if you look at this, all these, I remember the the create, uh, the urban game, you had coal mines. And coal mines were essential to the beginnings of uh, of powering factories. And if you look at all these purple spots everywhere, all through Europe, and look at England specifically, these uh, are what we call natural resources. And England was full of natural resources. So we're going to look at this and uh, hopefully by the end of this, the goal is that you'll be able to uh, understand, kind of piece everything together that we've been learning. And you'll feel ready to go for the exam tomorrow. So uh, let's start. Oh my God froze. All right. So England was the first country to become industrialized. And we said that the Industrial Revolution was actually preceded. That means that it, uh, what came before it was the Agricultural Revolution. And we talked about something called enclosures. That enclosures were, let me zoom in here. Oh, you can just do this. Oh my God. Uh, Enclosures were basically a way to close off the land, these enclosures, and you could plant different foods in, uh, in, in the different uh, plots of land, and you could rotate the crops, and, and it began to yield higher production of food. Well, this, these enclosures, and <clears throat> actually the, the agricultural revolution paved the way uh, with, for the Industrial Revolution. Now, the Industrial Revolution was a shift from people doing things to machines doing things. Now, I want you to think about this. I have this little iPod. Now, this little iPod, if I were to open it up, uh, the intricacies inside of this would take hours and hours for somebody just to put them together all one by one. I mean, and maybe it would take me months just to get one. But machines can pop these out so that you and I and everyone else can have one. And maybe you have something similar. Well, that's the beauty of industrialization, that it increased the production. And that means that more people could have things. Now, England, the reason it began in England was because England had a reservoir uh, of natural resources. For example, coal, iron, and rivers. And it had harbors so the ships could uh, come and go. We've said that the Industrial Revolution began in the textile industry. And now let's look at this. You might be like, whoa, man, what's textile? Well, let's look at this real quick. The textile industry uh, is, is the way clothes uh, is made. Before, it used to be one person weaving together the clothes and doing the process, like the video that we watched. And now it was machines. And machines could do the work of hundreds of people. And this, of course, increased production. The first, the first uh, factories were powered by water, the power loom. But eventually they're going to be replaced. And we learned about this in the urban game because of a man named James Watt. James Watt creates a better engine, but this is powered by coal. And of course, coal is going to increase the pollution uh, in cities. And also, the last thing in the Industrial Revolution is that uh, there were better... Uh, transportation systems, things to shift 
the the resources back and forth if you're producing a bunch of things you need uh, you need to be able to ship them all around the country and therefore uh, new transportation w methods were created such as the railroad and this is where we ended and we wanted to see well okay now that England is industrialized what is a city inside England look like what way do people live and work uh, in England and we said that factory work was extremely demanding and extremely difficult because as people are moving from the country to the city uh, there it creates a huge amount of problems and let's look at this chart I actually like this chart if you look here here's the city population let me see if I can blow this up the city population as you can see the city population is in blue and uh, in 1700 and then the city population in 1900 and what you see is a, a, a precipitous increase in the city population you go from around 15,000 people to 500,000 people uh, in, in some cities. And so there is a huge growth of cities. And why is that? Well, because there's a lot of work in the cities, mostly to be done in the factories. Now, we said that some cities, they weren't prepared. You remember the game, the urban game, that some of your cities were like there was, you know, cemetery next to a pub and a pub next to a church and all these things. Well, the thing is that uh, some, it's, you know, the concept of the city was, was somewhat new and living conditions in the cities were uh, not, not good. There was sicknesses, uh, sickness was widespread, epidemics like cholera swept through the urban slums. The lifespan in a large city could be as low as 17 years. Uh, and wealthy merchants, factory owners lived in luxur luxurious suburban homes. Like I told you, remember, to build your house outside and you, you had the big house and the rest of it, the tenements and all that was inside. Well, that, that, that's what we're talking about, that the people who had money uh, were, had a way better life than the people who didn't. And there were no sanitary codes and, and so on. So cities also went without adequate housing or education or police protection. Now the average working day, oh, oh my god, the average working day, we looked at the life of William Cooper, <coughs> just a young boy, the average working day was about 14 hours, six days a week, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> oh, sorry guys, <sighs> that's the stuff, all right, uh, and you know, the city, the, the factories were dirty, they were poorly lit, and many workers became injured. Many coal workers, uh, miners, were also killed by coal dust. There, and, uh, there were a lot of dangers for workers. But what this does is that it creates a middle class. It's no longer like you have the really, really rich and you have the really, really poor. Now you have this kind of like skilled workers. They have a little bit of money. Uh, they can maybe, you know, have a comfortable standard of living. They're not going to be able to buy a castle, but they're also not going to be dying of hunger. Now, the long-term effects of the Industrial Revolution on cities, that it, it improved the living and working conditions, which are still evident today. We, we benefit from these, benefit, uh, from these changes in, in urbanization in urban cities. And governments also increased tax revenues for urban improvements. They took the money from the workers, as they were doing, and they said, let's create these roads for the public good. And so these were some long-term effects. Now, the last image I want to show you is... I know this is going to be a little bit difficult to see. Let me see if I can do this. This is what the cities look like. Remember, uh, they're extremely crowded into the tenements. Uh, the tenements, they didn't have uh, sanitation. And so, you know, it probably didn't smell that good. And there were a lot of diseases and so on. So these were some of the problems. But, you know, there people are going to be trying to solve these problems. And the last... Uh, one of the last images here, children. This is what we talked about. Uh, children are being exploited and being forced to work in these factories. And, uh, you know, they're not going to school. They're just being forced to work. And factory owners are getting rich, and they're getting rich off the backs of these children. Uh, and so the thing is, industrialization is, is, is a lot of money to be made, and it produces a lot of wealth. And other countries want this. And one of the first countries uh, to become industrialized after England was the United States. 
and it comes through a man named Samuel Slater. And we talked about Samuel Slater, how he snuck in uh, into a boat. Remember, textile workers couldn't leave England because of the secrets. But Samuel Slater disguised himself as a farm worker. He came to America and, and he, starts, uh, he, he starts a textile industry. He takes all the secrets that he learned and he starts it in, in uh, Lowell, Massachusetts. And, you know, young single women flocked to the factories and the same sort of things that were happening in England began to happen in America. Now, let's look at this picture real quick. If it works... All right, and we looked at this picture last time. Here's what the roads or the railroads look like before industrialization. Just 50 years later, look at the United States as being completely connected by railroads. And uh, right here, it says over 200,000 miles of railroads. And that's because the transportation of goods. People needed to transport more goods. Now, we also talked about Belgium and, uh, and the, how it spread in Europe and in Germany. Uh, let me see this real quick. All right, so here's where we're going to be. Now, if you remember the, the little game that we played with, the, it was called Rock, Paper, Scissors. Uh, we said that because the Industrial Revolution is, is changing the way people live, philosophers or thinkers begin to say, is this the best way for society to go? Uh, one of the philosophers that believed that, you know, you should just kind of let society decide where to go was this man named Adam Smith. Very handsome man. Let me show you his picture. There he is. And Adam Smith's ideas were central to the development of capitalism. And remember, capitalism is you have a bunch of candy and you go play. And you try to win as much as you can. Some of you guys got nine pieces and some of you guys got ten pieces. And the government was completely hands-off and that's called laissez-faire. And, and that's, that's industrialization. And that's kind of the society that the United States is. Some people get really, really rich. Some people have nothing, but hey, we can all compete. Now, another idea was socialism. Now, socialism are uh, it's kind of a system where it tries to uh, decrease the amount of wealth, uh, the separation of wealth between the classes. So it tries to distribute the wealth more evenly. And remember when you played rock, paper, scissors, and whatever you won, you gave it back to the government, which was me, and I gave it back to you. That's what socialism is. And finally, we have this man, Marx, and he takes socialism to another degree. And he creates, he writes a book called The Communist Manifesto, where he lays out his ideas. Another very handsome man. He lays out his ideas, and he talks about how uh, all of history has basically been a struggle between the haves and the haves nots. The people that have things have always been f at war, in a sense, against the people who don't. And he believed that the Industrial Revolution was actually going to tear people apart and that the have nots were going to rise up and take over. And this is a radical idea. Uh, and, and But, you know, it's, uh, it's a unique idea. And if you remember, we played rock, paper, scissors... A, uh, based on the ideas of communism, and it's everything is shared. It doesn't matter if you win or lose, you're going to end up with the same. And so communism, although it seemed like a good theory, it turned out to be somewhat problematic. Now, the last thing is that people aren't happy with what's happening in, in this industry, so they began to unionize, to create unions uh, formed by workers in order to improve working conditions. They sometimes use what a strike or a call uh, to work stoppage to pressure owners. So that means, for example, schools. Like if they're going to decrease the teacher pay um, for teachers, all the teachers could get together and say, we're not going to go to work tomorrow if that's going to happen. So it's like a leverage. Like we're pulling, we're, you know, we're going to stop work for one day if they don't meet our demands. So it's a way for workers to, to kind of have power against uh, the rich business owners. And finally, the U.S. Uh, ends child labor. Now, remember we were talking about that British U.S. laws passed to stop the worst abuses of industrialization. 
1840, uh, in 1842, the Mines Act in Britain stops women and children from working underground. Five years later, in 1847, workday for women and children limited to 10 hours in Britain. And by 1904, the US, uh, U.S. finally ends child labor and sets a maximum hours in, in the U.S. And oh, let me show you that real quick. So all these children, uh, tipple boy right here, uh, can no longer work because they uh, were being exploited. And, you know, I, as we're going to learn, we're going to end here, but women are also going to be fighting for rights. And one of the most famous women that we, we learned about here, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the women are going to be fighting for the right to vote and to improve society and uh, and. You know, they're going to be powerful, powerful reformers. Well, I, I hope this review has helped you. Uh, I really just put it together so you guys can have access to the information and kind of tie everything together uh, because we have learned a lot of information. Now, you can, this is, this video is going to be up on Edmodo so you can rewatch it, watch it numerous times, and, uh, and that's great. So, I hope you guys have a great day, and that's it.